I'm sitting. Me too. Yeah. Yep. Sore, though, though I could stand. Yeah. <laughs> what are you sore from? <laughs> I'm just sore from sitting. I think I'm, I'm getting old. I'm getting, I think uh, this is what's happened. I'm, my body is now, I'm realizing like everything's sore. I'm getting into that phase of life where everything's yep. a bit sore. Not, not drastic, but now I'm no, I'm noticing more. Like when I, I'm, I'm sitting all day and at the end I'm like, oh, that lower back, you know, not a good posture. Not good. The, uh, my partner's reading a magazine and she's like, sitting is the new smoking. I'm like, yeah, I heard that. Mm. Quite a while ago. I don't know if you remember. Um, Because everyone was like anti-sitting. We, as knowledge workers, (laughs) and especially those that telecommute, remote knowledge workers, we are sitting and sedentary the majority of the day. So I've been trying for years to make a, a concerted effort to get up walk around every hour. I remember when I was wearing the Apple Watch, like every hour it would tell me, hey, it's time to stand up. Or, you know, in between meetings and stuff, mm-hmm. I would just go and do some light housework or go out for a walk maybe after. It just, I have to constantly force myself to do it because we're not in the fields, right? We're not hunting. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're not doing what our body is supposed to do. I will never unlearn or never forget. I don't know if you've read Sapiens, but I think it was Sapiens in the book where he outlined why so many humans have back pain and yeah. i don't know if he's like this is a factor if this is his opinion but it's because evolu- evolutionary like we were never upright beings we were always on four legs and you know doing doing that and we're not m- meant in the body construction to be a two-legged creature and there's so much weight literally on our backs and i'm paraphrasing badly he ex- explains it better but that's basically why we all have back pain and sitting, it, you know, exacerbates that. And I'll never forget that because it makes so much sense. Every time my back hurts, I think of that book. Like, ah, I blame evolution. This is why. I, I've never <laughs> wanted to not be bipedal. But no. I can say this. I'm, I'm still, I've always kind of adhered to this uh, evolutionary theory that many of the ailments that we suffer in the second half of our lives are a direct result of having a second half to our life, right? We're, we're not intended to be a, a sentient, living, breathing being for 80 years. We're not. Like, up until just recently, we'd be lucky to hit 40. And that's when the shit kind of hits the fan, you know? The, the menopause starts for the ladies. The back pain starts for the boys. You know, you start, all of this stuff starts falling apart. It's hip. It was hip for me. It's my hip. And I think they're connected, I'm assuming. I don't know. My chiropractor would probably say there, there's a correlation. Back pain, I'm, I'm pain. suggesting we would need almost none of the medical attention that we do if once upon a time, like it was, you break your leg and, well, that's it. I'm probably going to die here. Right. Or, you know, at 40, it's like I've, I've spread my genes. I'm good. And bye. Because <laughs> now it's you time. I'm too pictures. slow. I'm going to get eaten. You see pictures of, of men specifically, like old, old pictures from like 1950, whatever. And yes. the guy is like, this man was a 37 year old man and he looks 60. 50. 60. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and we're like, what? And then you see a, you know, a 50 year old man now who looks younger than that it's it's crazy to see the the change we've had this constant conversation as we age and in our relationship here um that you know i'm about to turn 49 and everyone's Mm -hmm. sweet they're like oh you don't look 49 it's like i don't know what that means but i do what i what i think it means is that when i look at pictures of old people from the olden days we would think of a 49 year old person as like this ancient gray you know, out of shape, um, you know, wool suit guy (laughs) with big, (laughs) thick glasses who drives like a really large car and is getting ready for retirement so that he can enjoy the last two years of his life. Yep. But we've, I've looked into this. It's, is the, is it a perception as we get older, do our kind of old people around us look less old? Right. Like when we're young. Mm. So when you're, when you're 10, when you're 10, 
a 20 year old looks like a million years old, right? And when you're 25, a 50 year old looks like they're a hundred. But totally. as we creep up in age, it's like, oh, you look so young, you look so good. And I'm like, is this that kind of delusional perception that we have of ourselves and each other? Well, the people are lying to you, I think, first of all, that's just the thing Thank that people you. say, people that people Thank say, you. right? Not that you don't look 49. I don't know what that means either. But I think it's the thing that people say when someone says, oh, it's my birthday. I think it's automatic response. Oh, you don't look insert. Like every people just right. say that, right? But yes, is the answer to your question. And I don't know why I remember this, but very specifically, I remember being in grade five, maybe, and sitting in my elementary school during lunch somewhere. I don't know. And these kids came in the front door of the school who were in grade seven. Mm -hmm. And they had graduated from this school Ooh. the year prior and came back to see their favorite teacher. You know, yep. I remember this vividly, like, like it was yesterday. They came in, the teacher, oh my God, great to see you guys. How's it going? And these guys, to me, looked old. They looked so, like, oh my gosh. They're only two years older at the time. But when you're mm -hmm. 10 and they're 12, it's like it, cat years, you know, nine years difference. They looked really old. And I remember being in grade seven and being like, oh, they weren't old because now I'm I'm where they were. This perception, I think it's a thing. It's definitely a huge thing. When, when I entered grade nine, everyone looked at the senior class like they were basically adults. Like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. They're drinking, they're driving, they're, they're, they're <laughs> beards, <laughs> you know, they have like job jobs and shit. It was, wow, these are old people. And you'd think that I'm a million miles away from that. But that's puberty, you know, it all kicks into gear. Mm -hmm. I, I recently, well, I don't know when, do you recall, maybe not specifically, but thereabouts, the first time that someone sirred you, like you were a sir? Yes. Yes. It was, it was in a bar. It was, I came back from Costa Rica and I was here and it was the, the bartender. I said, sir, would you like, what would you like to drink? And I was like, who are you talking to? <laughs> right. <laughs> you talking, talking to me? Right. Uh, I didn't bring my dad. What, who's what's going on? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's 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 strange. I um. Yeah, I I, I think I remember the f first time that happened to me, outside of the like, south of Dixie, right? Anybody in the <laughs> southern United States is gonna sir and ma'am you and all day long, just you know what it is. But up here. It just means that, hey, you're an elder, like you're, you're older than me. Does anyone call you Mr. Coates? Um, I get a lot of, because I live in French Canada, a lot of Mr. Corey, right? <laughs> like, I, like I used to get in Latin America, right? It's like, oh, Senor Corey. And it's like, no, 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 that's, that's my first name. And like, oh, Senor Corey Ryan. I'm like, no, 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 that's my middle name. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just Mr. Coates. It's okay. I do get that, especially on the customer service calls, right? When you got to call the airline, like, hello, Mr. Coates. Right. I expect that. Uh, but in day-to-day -day life now, it's, uh, excuse me, Mr. Corey. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> that sounds like a, a host of a children's puppet show or something. And now Mr. Corey and his, you know what I mean? It's weird. Yep. It is interesting for me when I'm, when I'm teaching. Because when I obviously when I started, most of my students were older than me, and now we're kind of in a transition where we're like the same age, and now and I'm thinking forward where I'm going to be older than most of them, and it's just yeah. it's an interesting thought. It just is a realization that man, time time goes, man, time time it does go, and enjoy it, and it's an interesting process just to watch it happen. What which which teacher are you? in person and i'm gonna throw out a couple blanket generalizations here yeah. are you the chalk on the hands wearing my sport coat elbow patches call me mr woodbury or no. are you walk in flip the chair around sit on it backwards jeans and jacket and say call me andrew yes not so much the <laughs> backwards chair <laughs> but yeah definitely not that guy i love that guy <laughs> I definitely sit in the chair and like they usually have wheelie chairs like with wheels so I wheel it around and like move around and things like that. that's that's me definitely like jeans t-shirt like 
Blues Brothers shirt, whatever, and just like, yeah, call me Andrew. I, it, it, it freaks me out. Or maybe it's just the, the getting older. I don't want it. Maybe that's the subconscious. I don't want people to say anything with a mister or a sir. And they do because it's polite and that's fine. But they're uncomfortable calling me Andrew because usually in their culture, you don't do that to a, right. a, a teacher. Um, but definitely, I'm, I'm, I'm the call me Andrew. Let's just have a conversation. I'm, I'm jeans and, and sneakers guy. For sure. For sure. <laughs> Do you ever sit on the desk? Like you walk in, you kind of sit on the desk, like just to shock yep. everybody. Like, dude, I'm like one of you. Like we can yeah. hang. This is cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I had a student once a lot because I'm also like, a, I think a, a pretty hard marker. Like I have high expectations. So one guy was like, after they got their whatever, what it was back, they were like, where did our nice teacher go? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's I was like, amazing. I'm still here. That just wasn't very good, man. Like, come on. <laughs> when I was teaching, I always fantasized about, you know, doing like a like a Michael Scott move or something where day one, they don't know who I am. They don't recognize me. So I go in and I sit down as a student, right? And I talk to everybody and I, I try and be cool and hear what everyone has to say about maybe this teacher or this course and then go, bam, I'm your teacher. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that'd be good yeah that would be good i think or i'm definitely super, that... super awkward or super awkward for the rest of the, the semester it's always a it's always an interesting reaction on the first day you kind of have to warm up to it <laughs> but yeah. then they settle in because there are thinking from their perspective like a, a vast variety of like teaching styles and everyone's different and you know, I know I'm different and I'm more like kind of relaxed and chill than some people are. So it does kind of get them a couple of days to get used to it. But then, then usually we're, we're into the zone and we're fine. I, I, sometimes I, I sit on the thought desk. About... I definitely sit on the desk a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, I didn't like, I was shirt tie. Uh, I, I wasn't that I'm your buddy profile mm -hmm. guy. I'm like, I'm, I'm your teacher. This is what it is. Largely because at, in the early stages of our, our teaching careers, uh, we, we were teaching in a semi-professional setting, right? So that was the, the thing yeah. that I think we. Well, I, I should say to I'm, I'm that way now because I'm comfortable in my skin of, of teaching and, and confident in my ability. At the beginning, I don't. I wasn't that way. I was like, you know, more. In, I haven't done this before. I'm insecure. I don't know what I'm doing. So more like, I'm professional. Let's sit in the chair and do that. But I think the other things come when you're just. Or at least for me, like, okay, I know what I'm doing. I'm good at this. I could be like more comfortable with it for sure. As you, as you get older and your hips fail, I wonder, yeah. I, cause I just had this sort of flash again. When, when I was a kid, you know, I used to fantasize about all the things that I would do when I'm older, like all the things I could do when I'm a grown up. you know, especially once you get past like 25 and you can rent cars and shit. <laughs> But, you know, as a, as a young kid, it was like I was into ninja stuff. Like I wanted to buy samurai swords and shuriken and throwing stars. And I was like, I was looking up through all the ninja magazines. Like I'm going to buy all these ninja outfits and stuff. I'm like, man, when I'm older, I'm going to buy all the ninja stuff I want. And then there's, I think, a variety of these examples and almost none of which I have fulfilled. Right. <laughs> so I'm wondering <laughs> if, if there's a way to tell the kids like all that stuff that you're like, when I'm a grown up, I'm going to do all of this. You probably won't. And it's kind of sad. Yeah. So you should, if you want to, you should, I mean, do you still want that? I, I wish, I wish I had written myself a note, like eight year old Corey wrote 48 year old Corey, the, uh, mm -hmm. the shopping list. When you're a grown up, do all of this, right? <laughs> Because I think it would be hilarious to read and to see, and even more memeable to go out and actually do that, like do all the things that eight-year-old Corey did. So my message to eight-year-old people is write yourself a list to 48-year-old you, but don't open it until your 48th birthday. It's like you know, a little time even use like a Yeah. But don't, it's not like, hey, this is what I think and feel today as an eight-year-old. It's like, make yourself a list of all the things I'm going to do when I'm a grown-up. Like an inverted bucket list. Mm. But if it's mm -hmm. eight-year-old, it would be like a pale, pale list? A pale list. Yep, yeah. it's a pale list. <laughs> it's a pail and shovel. <laughs> I, I, think it, I think it would be hilarious to see what eight-year-old Woody 
would want a eight year old or forty eight year old Woody to to shop for and to do I think with so. it. That'd yeah. be a funny episode of a show or like a little movie or something where there's no decision. You're obligated to open this up and then you go do it. And 48 year old you goes into Toys R Us and, and whatever it is, you know what I mean? It would be me. The picture is me in a, a Knight Rider car <laughs> with a samurai sword in the back seat and probably R2-D2 in the passenger side. Mm -hmm. Right. And I have just got all the Fruit Loops and Frosted Flakes I can possibly eat. <laughs> yeah, he's telling me that I can't have any more Fruit Loops. It would be it'd be pretty funny. It'd be quite a day. Oh, I like that. That would be good. I don't know what mine would be. There's something along those lines as well. Definitely, fruit, I was a Fruit Loop guy. What was I watching when I was eight? Something like Power Rangers or something like that. You know what I mean? Ninja Turtles yep. maybe. And. Uh, yeah i like this i like this okay i would go to disney world like i just go because i can mm -hmm. <laughs> you know i should i shouldn't say this you know i know a lot of people who do kind of live out those fantasies still um i've got some colleagues and friends who do things like that they go to disney world every year because when they were a kid that you know it was hard to or they couldn't um you go into yeah. their their man cave or their she shed and you see samurai swords on the walls or that you know sewing machine that, that you always wanted to get that you weren't allowed to use when you were a kid and stuff so i guess to some degree we do it it's just what we desire changes why not yeah i mean why not there's no script to this right like if there's no like you're an adult so you have to one two three like if that's what you like that's that you should i mean i'm in that boat you should do that like because Hey, your hips get old, your back gets old, you get you get sore. You might as well do what you want to do. Like if you're interested in something, go do it. My niece, who's six, or if you ask her, six plus, will said something uh, just brilliant, uh, as as children often do. Uh, I couldn't remember what specifically it was. It was like I I couldn't do something or I shouldn't do something, and she said, "Why? You don't live with your mom." And the that perspective of the six-year-old is like well you don't live with your mom so you can kind of do whatever you want it has been carrying over for weeks into a lot of things it's like oh I, sh I shouldn't have that that ice cream you know it's like 10 o'clock but then I, I go why I don't live with my mom I can have that ice cream oh I shouldn't watch one more episode of that it's time for bed and and then in the back of my mind she's going you don't have a bedtime <laughs> But you can watch that episode if you're not tired. So, Does that make you want to go back and live with your mom? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Mm -hmm. A little bit. It'd be easier. Structured. Right. <laughs> Time for bed, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, right? When that switch happens, when like there is no external regulation, where then we just say to ourselves, no, I, I shouldn't do that. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. Well, why not? Then why not? Maybe there's Have an the ice app cream. that we could develop. It's called Mom or something, you know, mm -hmm. and it uses generative, like an LLM and AI kind of thing, where it's going to tell you at certain times a day that hey, it's time for bed or you know it's time for dinner, but don't eat too much or you're going to spoil your dinner. We've been having that a lot lately around here. Hey, don't eat that. You're going to spoil your dinner. Um, and you can ask your mom for things and it can say yes or no. And it can be snarky. You can program it, it to be, be sort criteria, of criteria, right? For the ice cream. Like right. it's 10 o'clock. You, did you finish your vegetables? Yes or no? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Did how, you do how many dishes? pieces of fruit did you have today? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if all the exactly. answers are yes, go ahead. Green light ice cream time. All right. But you can have ice cream, but not too much because it's late. <laughs> you know, so, so we, we basically, we reparent with this mom thing. And remember, yeah, we have soccer practice it, in the morning. <laughs> so maybe the idea is that we set Mom. these objectives, right? This is where we want to be in a year of our life. Right? And it, this, this mom is going to start nagging us and helping us develop habits and become more aware of our behavior by, you know, mothering us pretty constantly, right? And it'll text you, right? It'll send you text messages and stuff. Hey, where are you? When are you coming home? You know, it'll like all these things. It's like, <laughs> you're not out with so-and-so, are you? What time will you be home? Where are you exactly. going? You're not doing that podcast thing, are you? It's the middle of the day. <laughs> I like it. Mom, 
can be a little acronym too, you know, my other uh, or something, other mother. you know, other mother, my other, <laughs> other my mother, other mother. <laughs> <laughs> I like this middle of the day podcast thing we're doing now. This works it's well great. for me. Yeah. I like it so far. This is nice. We got two ideas. We got an eight-year-old uh, reverse pale time capsule and uh, my other mother app. My this other is, mother. This is a... There's a foundation there. I mean, we all want. I think you know, starting new things and habits is just difficult, right, for everybody. So anyone can do it for a week or two, but my other mother helps you do it for the year. You know, right. holds you accountable. And it's funny. I don't. Have you ever seen? I, I used to use an app called Carrot. It's a weather app. Okay. And it's it, you can dial in the level of snark and uh, lewdness, right? <laughs> so it can give you the weather as per normal, but it can also sort of like hurt you a little bit, <laughs> telling you the weather and sort of what's wrong with you, likely as a human, <laughs> and how the weather might be a part of that. It, it's really funny. So it's kind okay. of, a, it's a very engaging weather app. So there could be it different, makes me, you said, what type of teacher am I? So there, there's different types of mothers or parents, right? Different. There's, mm -hmm. are you the snarky mom? Are you the, the helicopter Heli mom? Are you the, right. the hippie mom? Are you, the, you know, are you mean? the coddler? Are you the strict mom? Are you the, uh, anxious and uh, you ruined my life by being born mom <laughs> like there's a lot of moms out there <laughs> this is fun because you could say fun. you could choose what kind of mom you want exactly yeah uh, i once had a i once had a conversation with somebody about um there's a there's this thing called reparenting i don't know i don't understand it so i'm not going to speak right. on it i don't i don't get it but i like the word <laughs> and we uh I had this idea floated to me, which was instead of adopting children in your adulthood, there were parents like adults who you could adopt as new parents to say, you know what, we've, we've crossed a threshold here. Let me, let me try and explain for when you're a child up until adulthood, you know, you rely a hundred percent on your parents to provide you with kind of everything you need emotionally, physically, financially, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it fades, ideally, into a scenario where they become your parents, but they're still there for guidance. For a lot of folks, the parents kind of flip the script and they start needing their kids. They become very emotionally needy of them mm -hmm. to su support them. Even, you know, not I'm not talking about like when they're in their 80s and they need the help help, but you know, they... They're like in their 30s or 40s and they start turning the script on the kids. I'm suggesting, and I heard this kind of idea, it would be cool if there were really emotionally mature people in the world who decided we are going to volunteer to be adoptable parents. That You can text, you can call, you can come over for dinner, we can have lunch, so that you can have an adult guardian or figurehead in your life that's emotionally mature and is not going to flip the script on you and look for you to be their parent in, in effect. That's interesting. That's interesting. Adopt a parent. Yeah. There's some people who like, it's, it's just not working with their parents. It's, yeah. just, it's, <laughs> it's not you. Not it's me. Any, it, yeah. yeah. And it's like, you'll <laughs> always be my parents and I'll always love you and I'll always, et cetera. But you know what? I could, I could use an adult, who knows me, gets me, loves me, and can give me the gentle yet firm guidance that I need in my life. Because sometimes you need to talk to a grown-up about a thing, and you need that grown-up to care. And it can't always be your therapist. Mm -hmm. My other mother. My other mother might be the beginning of this process. But the upgrade from mom is like really adopting a parent. Right. You know, maybe there's a matching service where it starts to get to know you and your habits. And it says, you know, we've, we've got some moms. <laughs> so, there's something it, here. It's yeah. interesting. There's an algorithm. Yeah. It's like eHarmony for reparenting. Right. Um, huh. Yeah. There's got to be some sort of a Tinder social... I'm just going to throw all the words in there. Mm -hmm. LLMs, AI. 
start. I think we could actually probably get a little bit of startup money and build this this app. It's, 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 it's a fun idea. It's a fun this idea. This has got ruining our society written all oh, over it. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's over. Yeah. And S Silicon Valley loves putting billions of dollars into things that are going to tear at the very fabric of humanity. This is a good one. It's a good one. You just get emotional support from people you've never met and become your parents while getting rid of your actual parents. I think this is good. This what, is do good. You, uh, what, what are you reading? I just finished The Psychology of Money. Oh. And now I'm going to start reading uh, Adam Grant's book. I just picked it up, which I think is Think Again. I think it's called. Okay. It's, it's, okay. It has a new one, but not that one, the, the previous one. Nice. Nice. I'm moving away from, um, I'm, I'm finishing my last business optimization, self-optimization book for, for mm -hmm. a while. You know, I've saturated that. Uh, I've got two classics that I, you might have read. Mm. Oh, you did the walk away. You did it. Yeah. My bookshelf is close. I got the, the myth of Sisyphus. Nope. Not that one. Okay. You haven't read that one? That's okay. hard to say. The myth of what? The myth of Thith, myth of Thith of Thith. <laughs> <laughs> and Kafka, the castle. Okay. I'm I'm going to go yeah. into this sort of uh existentialist genre. This kind of nihilistic, you know, philosophers mm -hmm. talking about the futility of life kind of, kind of thing. So I'm going from this sort of like, hey, let's be optimistic about everything and we can make everything kind of work by developing structures and habits and all of this stuff. And then the whole opposite end of the spectrum of what's the point? What's the point? Just Sounds perfect for mom. ball up the hill. What's the point? Yeah. Right. So we could, we could have integrated into this mom app the skeptic, the cynic. Right? Absolutely. The, I think I'm, that's I'm the audience. A. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just, that's who wants this. That would be what it's for. It's not, not, you were here for, you know, positivity and building people up and participation ribbons. This isn't it. It's not the kind of mom we have. This is, this is the cynic. This is this, this skeptic. This is, you want snark? You're in the right place. Right. And somehow, no matter what you do, it's not good enough. Mm -hmm. And you always feel a little bit guilty. Yeah. Well, if you're not going to do it right, why, why do it at all? Like, why do you even make the bed? <laughs> why would you even bother calling me today? You never call me before. What's different now? Mm -hmm. Why don't you just never call me again? I'll just wither away and die. I mean, if you're 10 minutes early, you're basically late. So why, why are you even here? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what's the, like what's the restaurant? What's the restaurant where the servers are just mean to you on purpose? That's the gimmick. Oh yeah, I I What's don't that? remember where or what, but I have seen that before. Is that still a thing? That doesn't seem like a very Gen Z thing. I don't see like that <laughs> doesn't feel like the, a thing that would have survived the pandemic. No, that seems like a pre-pandemic absurdity that we've now gone. We can't live like this. This is dumb. <laughs> There's real real things that people really need, and one of them is food, and this is silly. <laughs> There's always an interesting idea, but I did I forget what it's what it's called. But there was there was a famous one where they just say I don't even know what they would say to you, but you pay to get roasted. I think basically. Right, I love it. Okay. Hey, what if mom were to give you bad medical advice? Right. So there's mm -hmm. like a lot of the um, old wives' tales, the sort of tribal knowledge. Um, just part of mom, uh, I think, is really, really giving you bad advice. <laughs> mom is just mom is confirmation bias. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. like oh yeah, that'll yeah absolutely that works. That's a great idea. Yeah, you should you should do that absolutely. Oh, you have you have this kind of illness. Just yeah, eat a pineapple. Yeah, absolutely, that's that's that'll take care of that for sure. Cut a potato in half, rub half on it. <laughs> And then bury the other half in the ground, you know? Put it in the oven for 30 minutes and then put it right on your face. 
and there's got to be some undertone of disdain for whomever you've chosen as your partner. Mm -hmm. Right. So she, mom doesn't like your wife, right? That's no. it. Cause she's also a mother in law in, in, in many respects. Right. So there's going to be a lot Raymond of like, Raymond vibe to it. Yeah. 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 Ooh. Oh yeah, yeah. We're go we're going out to the lake this weekend. We're gonna spend some time with friends, and then mom's like, "Oh, good for her. I haven't been to the lake in years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that she's enjoying her time off with you. <laughs> I I would love to hear more about it, but she hasn't responded to any of my messages lately. Have fun." <laughs> <laughs> oh you're going again are you oh that's nice that's oh. nice didn't you just go last week what is this like? no. <laughs> must be nice i thought you were busy at work the last time we talked you said you were very busy it seems like you're not so busy anymore Mom? your father's wondering when you're coming home He's not doing well, by the way. But I'm sure you know that. Have you told your father you're going to the lake? What's your father mm -hmm. going to say about going to the lake? Right. You know he can't swim. So maybe, what are the add-ons? Like, because mom's free. Yeah, right? definitely you, free. Everyone's got a mom. But is there the upgrade like there's got to be the subscription service where you add an aunt mm. or right 23 and you mom a, 23 and mom <laughs> you got a cool cousin or you find out that you're actually part egyptian and now it's mm -hmm. like really kind of a unspoken thing in the family that we've got some egyptian like something weird, this thing where you pay like a dollar ninety nine a month for every family member that you get to add to your circle, and there's group <laughs> chats, right? There's this whole like, oh my god, I just got into a message chain where they're sending all these stupid memes around. That's interesting. That's in that's could be one option. Another one is if it's actually to hold you account like this snarky mom is holding you accountable for things, then there's an upgrade to an actual thing that could actually help you do the thing. Right? That would be amazing. So you get the snark for free, but then if you want the implementation, you know, right. there's an actual mom that helps you do it, whatever the habit is or whatever the the activity is, or whatever the you know, for the year. You know that you want to do there's an actual tool that helps you i've got it i think i've got this the tool as you utilize it the more you stick to your habits and the more you do the things that you want to do to improve yourself the nicer your mom gets oh so at first mom's kind of a royal bee but <laughs> as you do more of the things that mom's like hey these are good for you the nicer mom gets, the more she kind of lays off and sort of leaves you alone. And she starts giving you maybe some more sage advice. Maybe she's actually for the first time in who knows how long asking genuinely, how are you instead of like, you know, telling you how she's been doing because of your behavior. This, this could be a thing. I like it. That's good. There's a little incentive, right? There's a little bit of an incentive there. I don't want to piss off mom. No, I don't want to disappoint and when I do. Her. I don't want to disappoint her. <gasps> That's don't what mom would say, mom. right? I'm not, I'm not angry. Yep. I'm just disappointed. I'm, I'm disappointed. <laughs> yeah, I, ex I expected more from you. This, this is not the kid that I raised. That's the one. That's the big one. That's the. And there can be like a lever in the app, right? So you have like the green at the top and it goes up and down. And the more, you know what I mean? So you can see where you, oh, I just need one more and then the snark is gone. But oh no, I regressed. And then I'm there and you can see your, your progress. It's God points. It's mom points. Yeah. Mom points. It, it's mom points. Mm -hmm. And one of the things okay. could be, you, you know, you, you literally, you actually like call your mother. You know, like that gives you a ton of points. Like you call yes. your mom or you call your dad or you go for a visit or you send flowers or you, you write a birthday card like with your hand on paper. You write it, 
to them. You know, that, that's big points. Mail it. But the, the spirit of it is because this is what you actually want for yourself. Right. Right. You put that in. That's your information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Holds you accountable to yourself. And, then, and there's tips and suggestions of things that, you know, within the community we've also found have been effective things to add perhaps to, to your nag pile or whatever it is. Like there could be this, <laughs> this folder of things that you want to be nagged about. <laughs> I think there's something there. Okay. My other right. mother. I, yeah. My other. Uh, Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you okay? Yeah, doing good. Yeah, doing good. You okay? All right. I'm okay. I'm okay. Spring is uh, springing. Finally. Finally. No snow. Not since last week. No. No. Should we um? Should we get back to work? Probably. Yeah, it sucks. Okay. Well. <laughs> uh. I'll let you know how the rolling the rock up the hill goes. Please do. And mm -hmm. then I'll, I'll nag you about it. Did you, have you read your chapter yet today? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, talk to you soon. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>